Hello crafty friends, welcome to another use it or lose it video. Today we are going to be using or losing ribbon. Ribbon was one of the items that came up quite a lot when I asked what in your craft room do you need to use or lose. So I've got my ribbon out and this is my sum total when it comes to ribbon. It's not something I use a lot but I did buy this Violet Studio pastel ribbon when I was going through a bit of a pastel phase in my scrapbooking. So I'm going to try and use this today. Obviously you don't need to go out and buy any ribbon if you haven't got any. In my mind ribbon is fabric washi tape so you can use it a bit like washi tape. So if you've got washi tape but no ribbon then try what I do today with your washi tape and get some of that used up. Or if you've got different ribbon, different colours, different patterns, different thicknesses, then give these techniques a go. So the first thing I'm going to do with my ribbon is create a ribbon fabric panel. And I've got some double-sided sticky here, which I'm going to stick to this bit of card. And I'll peel that back and get my ribbon. I think we'll go in rainbow order and just stick that on the double-sided sticky, pulling it taut but not too taut if you see what I mean, and lining them up are like that. So that's one set of each ribbon, I'll just trim that off and then we'll go down the pattern again. And I'm going to finish it off with a bit of pink so that it's pink at the top and pink at the bottom. So now we have a lovely stripy panel that we could cut down with a trimmer or a guillotine or a pair of scissors and use as a panel on our card. I think I should do just that. I'm going to take the top off of this, get a nice neat edge there, flip it around and I think we'll have about an inch and a half. I'm going to take this little panel, pop it on a bit of smooth white cardstock, trim that out and add it to the front of a four by six inch card blank. So I've added that there. I will later on add some die cuts and some sentiments. So come back at the end of the video and I'll show you all the finished cards that I make with my ribbons today. So that's card number one, just a simple fabric stripey panel. So technique number two is die cutting from your ribbon covered paper. And I thought this pastel ribbon would suit ice creams really well. So I've got this Sizzix ice cream die. I don't know what set this came from. It was a charity shop find. And I'm going to cut this little bit of ribbony paper with it. I don't want to cut the stick because I'm going to do that out of cardstock. So I can just line the die up with the bottom of the pink ribbon. Put it on a shim. I've got two bits of card to act as a shim because I'm trying to cut through ribbon and card and then run it through my mini Gemini and I'm going to do that twice. So it has cut it but in some places the ribbon can be a bit stubborn so all I'm going to do is run my scissors around the cut line and that will snip through any bits of thread that haven't cut with the die. Snip off that little bit of stick. You can also tidy up any frayed edges. The ribbon shouldn't fray too badly because it's stuck to the card. So I've got five ice creams. I'm going to colour a bit of card with the residual vintage photo left on this finger door back. And then die cut five sticks. I've got five lollipop sticks, a little bit of glue on there. Now I can add my ice creams to them. And again, come back at the end of the video and I'll show you the card that I made with my little ribbony ice creams. So now we're on technique number three. I've made a blue and green stripy bit of ribbon card as I did in technique number one. But what I'm gonna do is run this through my cuttle bug with an embossing folder. So 
I want the pattern to be pressed upwards, so I'll pop that on there like that. So here we have a beautiful bit of embossed ribbon card. I hope you can see that lovely dimension and pattern on there. And the bonus with this tip is if you've got little kinks in your ribbon, you can obviously always iron it on an appropriate heat setting to get rid of those kinks. But uh, the embossing technique does that as well. So you can dry emboss with your ribbon. And I'm also thinking that you can do all sorts of embossing techniques with ribbon card, just as you would with paper card, maybe put some ink on and you could change the colour of your ribbon a little bit. So that's number three. And again, I will make a card with that. And technique number four is to use some ribbon behind your focal point. So let's imagine this is our focal point. We've got a little bit of gel printed paper mounted on white, maybe a heart or a flower or both and a sentiment layered on top. You could take your ribbon, just one strand and wrap it round like that to give your focal point something to sit on. That'd be really simple, really clean. I think the silver grey goes really nicely with that blue, but obviously use whatever ribbon and colour in focal point you want. So that's simple. You can also zigzag your ribbon. So let's pop some tape runner. You could use a double-sided tape and you can zigzag it. So this would obviously depend on the size and shape of your focal point. Cut another angle there. You could add your focal point with a bit of ribbon behind it like that. So you don't have to wrap your ribbon all the way around your card if you don't want to. You could just have a simple strip like that behind your focal point. So it doesn't have to go all the way around. So you can use a simple strip behind your focal point. You can wrap it. You can just have a little bit. You could have several little bits. You could zigzag it like that. If you want to add a ribbon or a bow, I'm not very good at tying bows. And there are loads of YouTube videos on how to tie a bow with ribbon. So I'm not going to attempt that today. So if you do want to add a knot or a bow, you can attach your ribbon to your card. And instead of trying to tie it around the card, you can tie the knot or the bow kind of separately from this bit. So I've just got that short bit and I'm going to tie it in a knot around my ribbon like that. So let's hide this bit. So that looks like I've taken a bit, brought it around the front and tied it. But what I've actually done is stuck that down and then tied a little bit around it. So that's technique number four. Add a bit of ribbon to the front of your card, behind your focal point or beneath your focal point or as the focal point, very simple. So we're on to technique number five now, and that is to create banners and tails with your ribbon. They're a bit like washi tape. You can cut a fish tail by folding your ribbon in half, getting a sharp pair of scissors and snipping like that. And now you've got a lovely little fish tail in there. You can add tape runner to the back of your ribbon and then add that to the card or card panel. Pull it taut so that it's not warped, if you see what I mean. And then I'm going to pop a bit of tape on the back to secure that ribbon so I don't have a raggedy edge at the end of my card, at the edge of my card, so it wraps around nicely. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue and the green when I find where I've put the green or the pink. No, the pink, I'm going to use the pink. So there we have three little fishtails. Obviously, when you cut a fishtail, you get the opposite, you get more of an arrow, which you can also use. As well as adding fishtail or arrow banners directly to your card panel or your card blank, you can add them to things like tags. Anything with a hole in it, you can thread ribbon through. You can 
tape that in place onto your card panel so it doesn't wiggle around or you could use a stapler sometimes it's fun to add a metallic accent so you could add a couple of tiny staples to bring in a bit of something different to the front of your card and if you're into the look of rosettes you can give your rosettes a little ribbon imagine this is a rosette it's just a die cut circle you know, pop some tape runner on the back add a little folded piece of pink ribbon with a fishtail cut in each end and you've got something that resembles a rosette so you can use ribbons with fish tails to create all sorts of little looks on to technique number six and that is to add corner accents with ribbon so i've got that focal point from earlier and a piece of cardstock that is a bit bigger and i'm going to take a piece of this gray ribbon please excuse the drilling going on in the background the roadworks have resumed outside my house and i add the tape runner to the back and lay it across a corner and fold that over so now i've got a little peeking out corner accent i could add another one there if i wanted but i think that would be adequate for me so technique number six is to add corner accents so on to technique number seven and that is to use ribbon to mat your card panels and i can take my panel add some tape runner all the way around the edge and then take some ribbon and stick it all the way around the outside of my panel we'll deal with the corners in a minute going to put a bit of tape runner on the back in the corners and just fold these over so I haven't got any frayed edges dangling off so you could always leave it like that and edge your panel with ribbon or you can use it like a mat and pop a card panel on top and then you've got a nice fabric edge to your card panel. Right, technique number eight. Now this is to mix your ribbon with other papery media. You don't just have to use ribbon on its own. You can mix ribbon with washi tape, with pattern paper, with all sorts. So I've got my rainbow of ribbon. I'm going to take this piece of purple stripy paper from my 6x6 paper pad that I'm using in my 6x6 paper pad series. If you want to know more about that I'll leave a link to the playlist in the video description. As there's no purple in my ribbon selection I'm going to use the purple paper so I can add a new colour that way and this has got pattern on it and I'm going to slice it so I've got uh, well I suppose a vertical pattern and I'm not going to measure few strips of different widths and I've got some washi tape here I was thinking of raised gold but I actually think gold would be quite nice so I'm going to mix in a metallic and we've got a little bit of card here that I've stuck some double-sided sticky to so let's do some pink ribbon some paper a bit of gold I think blue look quite nice and we'll go in with some more stripy paper and then you can treat this like you would any bit of pattern paper you can die cut from it probably not intricate die cuts because the ribbon can be a bit stubborn you can run it through embossing folder you can make panels out of it so that's technique number eight so technique number nine is to do a bit of weaving. So I've got here a six hole punch and I'm going to just punch a few holes 
along the side here. So I've got some holes there. I'm going to trim that so it's, let's say, two and a half inches. And now I want to add some circles down this side. And I'm just going to find the centre of this circle here and mark it on there so that I can line up my punch like that. So it should be more or less the same height up the card. Now I've taken the yellow ribbon off of the matting panel that I did earlier because I want I haven't got much ribbon left and I wanted to show you this technique. So now I'm going to run tape runner down the back and I'm going to do faux weaving so you don't need whole strips of ribbon for this. I'm just going to pop the end of the ribbon there on that sticky and weave it down through the holes like I'm lacing shoes. I suppose this is lacing rather than weaving. I don't know, one or the other. And again, just fold it over so it is secured and then we can cut that off if we want. Just get another bit, stick that down, cross it over. So you obviously don't have to punch holes in a rectangle like I've done. You could do your holes in any orientation that you like. You can obviously use whatever shape card you like, use as many or as few holes as you like. Do them in a line, do them around the edge of a circle, whatever you want. You can use one long piece and thread it through as if you were actually doing some lacing. I'm doing it like this because I've only got little bits of ribbon and to show you that you can do it with little bits of ribbon because no one's ever going to see the back. No one's going to know that this isn't a complete one long bit of ribbon. So I'm going to add a little bit more tape runner to the back to secure that one. So there we have some, let's call it lacing. Okay, technique number nine is lacing. You can also do weaving. So let's call this technique number 10 weaving. So I just put a bit of tape down one side of this bit of card. Let's do the gray and the green because we've got the most of that left. So I'm just going to go down here a few, alternately green, green. And I'm only adhering it at one end so that I can do easier weaving. Put some tape on the back and flip those edges round. Keep them neat and tidy. I think we'll put this tape on the back here and we'll come in with a bit of green and go over under over under over under etc etc so this one will go under over under over under over Probably a good idea to run a bit of tape runner along the bottom where that bottom bit of ribbon is going to finish. So now we're coming to the end of our woven patch. I'm going to put some more tape runner to secure my ribbon. So there we have some woven ribbon, which brings me nicely to my last thing you can do with ribbon, and that is to use it to back an aperture. So I've got a card panel here, 
and a heart die and I'm going to cut an aperture in my panel about there so there's my aperture I've also cut a frame to go around my heart and I've also put too much glue there that's going to go on there like that and then this should fit nicely there you could put a bit of foam tape between the two if you wanted a bit more separation but I think that looks like quite nice like that so I'll put some glue around the edge here so now I can put this over the top and I can line up the middle of the heart with this line here in the weaving pattern this on the back here is quite bulky so you might want to add a bit of foam tape or an extra bit of card before you put it on your card blank just so it doesn't look lumpy and that's technique number 11 a little bonus technique back your apertures with some ribbon covered card woven or otherwise you could back it even with the laced ribbon right i'm going to toddle off now and finish the cards that i've started making and i'll be back in a second to show you the results right i'm back and i have made 10 cards from that single pack of ribbon and all i've got left over unused is this last little bit of embossed ribbon cardstock and i have no problem at all throwing that in the bin so we're gonna lose that everything else got used so this was actually the last card that I made and I made it like this simply because all I had left was this bit of pink ribbon and a bit of green ribbon and I thought that's going to fit on a card front crisscrossed as if it was wrapped around a present. I can stick that pink faux rosette that I cobbled together on and I just did that on a bit of foam tape to give it some dimension and these little bits stick out here and make sense because there's a bit of pink ribbon there added a gold foiled leafy branch thing and the ones that i've used today are left over i think from my 25 things to do with stencils video which i'll link in the video description for you if you're interested in that i added a happy birthday some gold foil circles from my gold foil circle pot and some mini enamel dots. These are from Violet Studio as well, the same people who made the ribbon. And I bought these at the same time that I bought the ribbon because they match. There's also a more pastel version, which I use as well. So that's card number one. Here's card number two, the one with the fishtail banners. I added another fishtail banner down here, popped a sentiment on, added a gold leafy thing, added some more gold circles and some green dots because there's no green ribbon on here I thought the green dots would pop quite nicely so that's got a diagonal design this was the one I did with the woven ribbon behind the aperture all I did was put some foam tape on the back stick it on a card blank add a gold foiled flower some dots and a many thanks sentiment and I think that looks lovely you've got the lovely gold shimmer from the cardstock and a subtle sheen from the ribbon here's one I did with the lace I put this behind an aperture too I cut a hole in the front panel of this card using a frame die and I popped the frame back in and then put the lace behind it added some dots and a gold heart and a sentiment on this one I wrapped the ribbon around and then separately as I did earlier on tied a knot and stuck the ends of the knot down with some mini glue dots. I then tucked some gold foiled foliage and flowers behind it and made sure to have some sticking out of the bottom, added a sentiment on foam tape and I used the pastel dots. So this is a bit more sombre. This is the one I did with the embossed panel, the dry embossed panel and I cut down that larger piece to a smaller piece, mounted it on some white, added it in the top right corner, created a diagonal flow across that with some green dots and gold dots, a gold heart and a pre-printed pre-cut sentiment. Here's the one with the corner accent. I decided I would use silver cardstock instead of gold because I've got this silvery grey bit here and I thought that tied in with the blue, silver and 
pale blue like that go together nicely added a sentiment and some wobbly circles that I cut from the same bit of cardstock so for these cards I went with the ice cream theme this one I cut some more ice creams out of white cardstock and I punched using my mini heart punch some hearts and added them onto the ice creams just to give a little bit more texture in the middle portion of them and then I stuck them on some card alternated with the ribbon ice creams chopped that down gave that a border by sticking it on another piece of cardstock added it to the bottom half of this tent fold five by seven card blank to give plenty of white space and then added a sentiment on foam and some sprinkles with enamel dots and in a similar vein, I added white ice creams with a heart on, cascading down this panel. I thought the white would look nice against all that colour. I could have used gold, but I think the white works. Added some more sprinkles and a happy birthday. And for my last card, I used the mix and match ribbon, paper and washi tape panel, stuck it on this square card with the ribbons and strips going vertically added that tag with a little blue tail added some gold foiled foliage and a bold sentiment on foam tape with some pink dots just pink this time to tie in with the pink ribbon so that is 10 cards and 11 ways to use ribbon on your clean and simple cards I hope it's given you some ideas so that you can get that ribbon out of your stash and onto your cards. I now have no ribbon in my stash and unless I see some amazing ribbon, I'm probably not going to buy any more for now. I will use, I think, washi tape. It's a little bit easier to work with, I think, washi tape when you want strips of things. Right, I think that'll do for today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.